Hello everyone. This is Alex of Venom Machine Support. In this video, I'm going to go over the sold out switches found in a Dixie Narco 501E, 276E, or 600E drink vending machine. I'm going to explain to you what the switches are, how they're connected, and how you can test them using the control board. Now, if you found this video useful, I appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. If you have any questions, ideas, or comments, please leave them below. And make sure you hit that notification bell. Let's get started. Now I've had this question come up with several viewers as well as customers of mine in regards to the sold out switches in a Dixie Narco drink vending machine. So first I'm going to show you where you can find these sold out switches. So I'm going to use this Dixie Narco 501E behind me. Now on a 501E and a 600E there's going to be a total of 9 of these switches. On a 276E there's going to be 7 of these switches. So we're going to open up the main door. The first thing we do is we're going to need to remove the motor cover. Now there are tabs here that you can put your fingers in to remove the cover. You just lift up, exposing the fin motors as well as your sold out switches. Now the sold out switches run across the top of each column in the machine. Now I have product in column number two and it's actually lifting the sold out paddle off of the actual sold out switch. Now the sold out switch is a micro switch. Now on a Dixon Arco 501E using the STD control board, this is a normally closed circuit. So what this means is there is a wire that's coming in through the common side of the switch and then exiting out the normally closed. So when the switch is at rest or when the sold out paddle is pressing down on the switch, when there's no product in it, the circuit is being broken. The computer board sees that broken circuit as no product or off. Now, in number two, there's product and the sold out paddle is lifting off of the micro switch. This is completing the circuit. So the voltage that's coming in through the common is exiting out the normally closed pin, going back to the control board. The control board sees that the circuit is completed or on. That means there's products in the column. So that's how the computer board can tell if there's potentially really product in there. Now where things get tricky is when you've got product in there and you've looked at the switches and the paddle is physically lifting up off of the switch and then you go to the control board and you press the service mode button and you're not getting any sort of JC error. You check to make sure that the home switch on your motor is in its home position as well as checking to make sure your fuse on your motor fuse for the SCD control board is not blown and you're getting one, two, three, or possibly all your selections saying sold out, where do you look at that point? So I want to start with the switches and work my way back to the control board and then show you the actual diagnostic test that you can do on the switches from the control board to see if they're activating or not activating. So let's get over the get very easy ones to check and that is mainly is the switch physically being lifted off? More often than not. It actually is a bad switch where the actual little actuator in the micro switch is stuck down, even though it's lifting off, but the little actuator is still stuck down. You've got a, some syrup in there or something, so you can just take your finger and rub on that or take a little pencil and push down on that to get that actuator to pop back up. Another thing to check is the actual wires going onto the switch. Now you've got a boot that slides onto the micro switch. Now that boot is something like this and there's two wires and a lot of times I have seen where that boot is not fully seated. Perhaps the uh, common side, which is the very bottom of the cherry switch, has not been seated correctly into the boot. It's been missed and that would not complete the circuit. Or oxidation has formed on the actual pins of the cherry switch or the micro switch. Uh, with that, you're going to want to go ahead and sand those off with a piece of sandpaper or you can take some electrical contact cleaner and spray that down to clean that off. Now, those are the first physical view things that you can check. Now as the wires come down, they come into a box located at the bottom of the door. So let me show you what you want to check on that. Once you've checked all your physical switches, as the wires come off the switches, they come down to the bottom of the door here into this harness and go into this box. Now this box here is just covering up the plugs of the switches. There's actually two connections. You have a harness that goes from the door and then this port harness goes up to the control board. So they've actually made a connection point here. So you don't have to replace the entire harness if the harness is actually bad. So I always like to check these if I'm having issues with the sold out switches. So I'll just remove this box. You're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver. 
Now we're just going to take this cover off. Now when this cover's off, we're going to find this the plug, the two plugs, that got the very small white wires. Now each of these wires are going to be for your motor home switches, the other one is going to be for the sold out switches, so it doesn't hurt to check both. What I like to do is I'll separate them, and I'll then pull each individual wire. I'll pull back on the wire, and what I'm looking for is if I have a loose pin. Now what you'll find with a loose pin is that when you pull back on the wire, the, the pin actually pulls out, means that when it's loose and you go to plug it in, the wire gets pushed back, not making a good connection. So that's a little quick way to determine if you've got a pulled wire or a bad plug. And again, that's just going to separate it, and then I pull back on each individual wire. So next journey of the connection is following the, as the wires come in this way, we're going to follow the wires all the way back up to the main control board. So let's take a look at that. The final destination of all the wires coming off the sold out switches as well as the home switches on the then motors is to the actual control board. Now this is our STD control board. There is our service mode button. And what we're going to be concerned with here is this long rectangular plug here sitting horizontally. So we've got two of them here stacked on top of each other. So do is I like to then remove power here. So this is our power plug. We'll go ahead and remove the power. Now once that's disconnected, I'm going to go ahead and remove this harness here because this is for our selection switches. So disconnect this. And that gives us a little bit more access to this plug here. Now this plug is for all your sold out switches and home motors. And what I have seen is that sometimes this is not fully seated, it slightly worked itself askew, or we have a bad pin. So to do that, I like to disconnect it, and I'll visually inspect it to make sure everything looks fine. Now what I'll do here, just like I did at the bottom of the door, is I will then go ahead and pull back on each individual wire, to make sure the pins do not pull out of the harness or connection. So it is a bit of a painstaking process, but when you're down to this point, it's worthwhile just to spend that extra time to see if that's where your issue is. Now everything looks fine there. I'm gonna go ahead and reconnect this. Now this is keyed, you can't put it in backwards. There's actually a little tab here at the top that prevents you from putting it upside down. I'll connect that back and I'll go ahead and put this the selection switches harness back in, and then here I'll just go ahead and reconnect that power. Now we can also use the diagnostics on the control board equipped on those SD control board to troubleshoot or see if the switches are actually being actuated or if the computer board is actually seeing the switches either in their on or off state. So to do that, we're going to press the service mode button found on the control board. And when this button's pressed, we're going to keep the door slightly ajar and don't let the inner door touch the main door and we should have HD on the display. Now we're going to press selection buttons 1 and 2 together at the same time until we have DIAG, which is short for diagnostics. So press and hold selection button 1 and 2 to navigate the menu until I get to DIAG. Now once we're at DIG, we're going to press and hold the number one selection button until the display reads SE-1 and then we let go and we'll have just SE. Now once we have SE on the display, we're going to press and hold selection buttons 1 and 2 and move to our next option, which are a sold out paddle or SP. Now SP is sold out paddle, indicating the computer board is showing us visually what selections it believes has product in there or what selection is actually completing the circuit. Now we had selection number two or column two has product in it, so that's why we have a two on the display. That circuit is being completed. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cheat number one to make the computer think there's product in there, so I'm gonna simply just take the spring off of the sold out paddle, which causes the sold out paddle to lift off the micro switch, completing the circuit. And then here we should have one, two. So it's showing us all of the circuits that are completed for the sold out switches. And right now that is one and two. Now if I go back and put the spring back onto the sold out paddle, we should get back to just two on the display. 
So SP is a let us see visually which circuits are being completed. So if you look at here and you look at all your selections that have got product in there, then you go to SP, those numbers should be represented. If you don't, then you know which column or selection definitely is an uncompleted circuit, then you want to check your switch or check your wiring. Now we're going to move to our next option, we're going to press and hold down selection buttons 1 and 2 together at the same time, and we're going to go to SW, which is sold switch. So this is telling us visually which circuits are not completed. So this is going to show us sequentially from 1 through 10, even though it's a 9 select machine, there are some 10 select machines, the control board can do 10, it's going to show us 1 through 10, all the not completed circuits. The only number that should be missing at this point is 2. So if you watch this, we're going to see it go 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Again, if I was to cheat out column number 1 by removing the spring, letting the paddle lift up off of the switch, completing the circuit. When we get to sequential, it's going to skip 1 and 2 because those have products in there or the circuits have been completed and now it's only showing us 3 through 10 because those circuits have not been completed. So this is a visual way for you to check to see which circuits are being completed and which circuits are not being completed on your sold out switches. Now I hope that gives you a little bit better understanding of how the sold out switches work in a Dixie Narco 501E, 276E, or 600E drink vending machine. Now, if you found this video useful, I appreciate if you could like and subscribe. If you have any questions, ideas, or comments, please leave them below. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.